So you finally saved up all that money for your brand new car and you're so proud, prouder than a peacock because you're about to pick it up. Sadly, you didn't know it yet, but that vehicle that you bought may not make 100,000 miles because of the engines found in that particular vehicle. Sadly, this story here demonstrates such an example. Kablooey, and there was smoke and steam just... Bought a recent Kia and realized after the fact that not only are they not supported appropriately, but they're also a very unsafe vehicle to drive because the engines can start on fire. And I'm gonna share with you guys 10 vehicles today that likely won't make 100,000 miles because the drivetrains were poorly made right from the get-go. Let's get into it now. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Mark with Exotic Car Play Place. So the first vehicle or engine that likely won't make it 100,000 miles is what's right behind us here. And that is the wonderful Bavarian Bullet. And this one is called the X1. The X1 can come in a different engines. Depending on the year, you can get six cylinder engines, you can get four cylinder engines. But the ones to avoid are anything with the N20 engine, N20 or N26. Now that is the direct injected turbo four cylinder engine built from around 2011 and to 2017. Like the 20 or 28 series, as you see right down here, you'll notice that's the 28i and it's X drive, all wheel drive. We circle around. And again, confirmed, we have an X1 right there. The problem with these engines that's tucked away in these vehicles is now there has been a class action lawsuit against BMW because of that engine. Well, what's the problem with this and why will that not last 100,000 miles? It all boils down to the timing chain. The timing chain coordinates the timing of ignition and spark with camshafts and crankshaft, and it's all run through two chains. There's a primary and a secondary chain. The primary chain connects the camshaft to the crankshaft. If that breaks, timing goes out of sync, bang, your engine is gone. But there's also a secondary chain. Now the secondary chain connects that timing sprockets to an oil pump. So could you imagine if that chain went, the engine may still run, but you could lose your oil supply resulting in, again, an engine that runs dry. So either way, no matter how you cut it, a damaged chain could result in a catastrophic engine damage. And the worst part is, there's many, many cars on the road with that engine and many people have seen failures. There's other failure points with these engines too, them eating up oil filters because of extended oil service intervals. There's other issues with leaks, coolant, and engine oil. These engines were not necessarily built to last. They're efficient, they're powerful, but they won't last. There was a settlement. They did extend the settlement from seven to eight years on the drivetrain, and BMW will actually prorate additional repairs. If you've got up to 80,000 miles, 90,000, and even up to 100,000 miles, BMW will ante up to about 40% of the repair if your car has up to 100,000 miles on it. Be careful, make sure you check on that recall. Otherwise, that engine likely will not last 100,000 miles. So the next vehicle on my list pains me to even mention it, and it's the Lexus ES300H, like we have back here. And what are the problems with that? Well, firstly, you can tell it's that, it's the hybrid. So you know we're talking about the ES300H just by looking at it. They are absolutely a beautiful car. Look at the wonderful mirrors, color matched. Interior of these vehicles are absolutely beautiful. Sporting look, you've got spoilers on there. Beautiful trim all the way around. But it's that 300H is a problem because it's included on a recall with a whole host of Toyotas and have been identified as having potential failures or cracks developing within the engine block as a result of poor casting issues in the factory. There was a poor mixture in the process and now there are engines out there that have this potential issue. Well, what can that result in? Well, the resulting issue is through cracking and fissures within the engine, it could mean leaking oil, leaking antifreeze, and of course, a potential for fire. Anytime you got a potential for fire, sounds like big troubles to me. So there's a lot of these potential issues with some of these Lexus cars. Now, fortunately, the numbers of vehicles impacted aren't all that high. Cars that were produced in 2019 from about September 16th to the end of December. If you have a vehicle with that production date on it, that likely will be one. And you'll probably be notified by Lexus anyway. The idea is they're going to be getting hold of customers to make those changes. Regardless, it sounds like a problem engine and one likely you may want to avoid because it might not last the test of time. So the next engine that is an absolute disaster out of the get-go is the two or two and a half liter four-cylinder engines by Subaru right here. Now it should be noted we have a turbo four-cylinder engine here by Subaru as well. These aren't really subject to the issue. It's the non-turbo engines like this of two and two and a half liter displacement. And basically cars from 2011 to 2015 were heavily scrutinized. 
heavy oil consumption to the tune of about a liter of oil per every two or three thousand kilometers wasn't necessarily out of order right out of the box that's way too much for a brand new vehicle and sadly those engines could be found in cars like this like the Impreza as well as Foresters any of those vehicles in that time frame were subject to it so what was the issue with these Subarus the issues were more or less a piston ring for the most part that were identified as faulty or inadequate caused this heavy oil consumption the problem is the dealers had to replace countless of engines for customers that experience this heavy oil consumption sorry about that Subaru it was a lost cause and considering all this massive oil consumption 100,000 miles not even likely to get even close to that unless of course you get the WRX so sadly the next vehicle on the list is another beautiful BMW like this one right here we have an X5 and not all X5s are the same some have turbo sixes some have twin turbo V8s like we see here in the 50 designation some have diesel engines and they all have their own issues to contend with as you can see this one here is the v8 and this one is the issue so what's the problem with this engine well the problem is this is the gas twin turbo v8 engine it's 4.4 liter v8 it has the n63 engine in it and the problem with this engine is there are timing chain issues that they can break and of course that means catastrophic engine damage as a result you've got valves on pistons and it's an interference engine and as a result they collide boom done but more importantly there's other issues here the unfortunate part is this n63 has also gone through class action lawsuits because there is a known issue heavy heavy oil consumption because what happens is in the v of the engine right there you've got the v and bmw has put the two turbos in between the v well those turbos create a lot of heat there wasn't enough isolation from the heat and now that heat kind of works down into the engine cooks the heads what you have is a situation with heavy oil consumption caused by roasting the camshafts roasting the valves and roasting the valve guide seals which means they no longer seal from oil consumption and these do start eating oil at a, an alarming rate early on in their careers so sadly anything with the 50 designation like a 550 650 x550 i x 750 m550 in the later generation cars too although they have been improved anything with that 50 designation in recent late model bmws means it's got that 4.4 liter twin turbo v8 and it will likely not make a hundred thousand miles Sadly, the next problematic engine is the early 2-liter turbo four-cylinder engine, as you can find right here in this Audi A4. I mean, Audis are so great with their Quattro all-wheel drive system. They've got the LED headlights, which are very nice. These vehicles are also very stylish overall and easily have some of the best interiors anywhere in the business. But where they went wrong was the fact that these A4s had the TFSI four-bangers tucked under the hood there. Yeah, they were a two liter four cylinder engine, great fuel economy, great performance. Although they weren't the most powerful in this segment, they were solid. The problem is this engine's not only an issue in the Audi world, but some of the Volkswagens share the same engine. And that really is a problem with oil fouling, head problems, and realistically, heavy oil consumption. There's also leaks from antifreeze and oil, and let's not forget about engine rebuilds needed at anywhere from 80 to 100,000 miles. In other words, it won't make it to 100,000 in many, many cases. These two liter engines by Audi. And now the next one is a big one, and it got a lot of press recently. Kia and Hyundai, both Korean auto manufacturers, have faced a serious issue this year. They've got 300,000 vehicles recalled so far because of a 2.4 liter four cylinder engine that can let go on the rod bearings, result in a fire, and the vehicles can burn down. There's been lots of news stories of these cars burning to the ground and leaving customers in a lurch. There's also been lots of stories about how allegedly they were slow to respond to issues reported by the customers. But you want some examples of some vehicles that contain that 2.4 liter engine that you want to try to avoid well here's a few let's start with the 2012 to 2015 kia forte and coupe subcompact cars these have the same engine as well as the two liter engines that are also potentially susceptible to this issue they also have multi-port fuel injection and it should be mentioned that you're going to want to check that car out as soon as possible and the 2012 kia sportage as you see right here were another one on the list and another one i have to report right here 2012 to 2013 Kia Sorento's with the 2.4 liter four cylinder engine is also susceptible and these are also noted as part of the recall. So how do you know you're an owner of one of these problematic cars other than by the engine? Well a bad rod knock is one indication you'll start to hear 
kind of a clunking or a knocking noise at the bottom of the engine. Oil changes could reveal filings. There could be issues with engine lights, service lights. And so Hyundai and Kia are suggesting that these vehicles get looked at, inspected. There have been many engines replaced already under this recall or a warranty issue. And the other suggestion is that they're talking about putting, installing a knock sensor and tying it into the main computer. I'm not necessarily a fan of that because if the knock sensor is required to hear it, it's probably already too late. So I think that's more of a band-aid personally, in my opinion. However, that seems to be one of the solutions, either installing the knock sensor or replacing the engines outright. Either way, it's too widespread and sadly these engines will not make 100,000 miles. This one really hurts me to talk about and it's the Porsche 996 Carrera or Carrera 4 or Carrera S, any number of variations of the naturally aspirated Carrera were a problem. Now when the Carrera came out back in 1999, there was a bunch of firsts for Porsche with the 911. Obviously it had the slab sides, it was liquid cooled, had the revised headlights which were different than anything previous in the Porsche world, but it also shed the Metzger style engine and it went with an integrated sump system and this new engine which proved to be a problem. Sadly, the same architecture shared between the older flat six Boxsters and the 996 generation of 911. And that really is the intermediate shaft. And the intermediate shaft is a bearing that literally has a 30 to 70 chance of failure. It's way too high to consider just a series of unfortunate events. So in other words, it's really a crapshoot and many would consider the 996 engine a ticking time bomb. In other words, likely it will fail in its lifetime at some point because of the intermediate shaft bearing. It's a sad, sad state. Now, while there are some great opportunities for retrofits, you can get oil fed bearing, you can also put a heavier duty dual row bearing in there and all of those solutions are better than what normally Porsche has provided in this 996 generation engine. But at the end of the day, it's a bit of an application miss here. And in my opinion, I think Porsche blew it with this one. They started to transition into the next generation, which was the Porsche 997, which continued that style of engine. Although the later versions of the 997 engines got a little better, they got a heavier bearing, but it wasn't until they got into the 991 Porsche 911 that they sort of shed some of those issues significantly. So sadly, the 996 911 is an engine you probably want to avoid. Now the next vehicle on my list that will likely not make 100,000 miles is the Cadillac SRX like we have right here. The big problem was if it had the 2.8 liter turbocharged V6 engine and you drove it like a hooligan, this could result in catastrophic engine failure or just deterioration because a lot of owners decide just to put regular fuel in it. Why? Well, it's cheaper, especially in times like this when they're tough. People sometimes skimp on the premium fuel. If you skip on the premium and you put regular and then you drive it like a madman say for example you take it out to the track or you just drive it hard for a while that in itself caused enough damage internally through detonation that it could result in irreversible damage and catastrophically destroy the engine by simply putting in the wrong type of fuel that's right it's a known issue for 2004 to 2016 Cadillac SRX's and because of its high level of sensitivity there's a very good chance it won't make a hundred thousand miles the Cadillac SRX now the next vehicle on our list that likely won't make it a hundred thousand miles and it's only because the maintenance cost repairs and if it doesn't burn down first is the Grand Cherokee but with the three liter diesel engine that's right from 2014 to 2019 there's about 28,000 vehicles recalled for a faulty exhaust gas recirculation cooler that could actually crack split re-inject some fuels and gases back into the intake as well as ignite if that happens boom as luxurious and beautiful as these vehicles are and they are well appointed they are very luxurious the sad part is quick fast and in a hurry if that recall is not managed up to the 2019 model year you could have yourself in a world of hurt if you happen to have the diesel engine in the Grand Cherokee so sadly another engine and I really really pains me to say this because Porsche is the epitome of performance sports cars what we have here is a Boxster this is a newer one this is the 718 Boxster so it's revised they've got a turbo four-cylinder engine but it's not this one here specifically that's the problem it's the older the original flat six variations of the Boxster that were a problem they were strongly based on the same architecture as the, as the Porsche 996 and as a result there were a fatal error with regarding these engines on the original flat six engines that you found in the original Boxsters had the IMS bearing issue 
And so what's the IMS? It's the intermediate shaft. And the problem with that was it was made of a poorly designed bearing and really not the right application to be honest. Some bearings would fail after 20,000 miles and other would last 100,000 miles. The problem is you didn't really know when it would fail. So it was essentially a ticking time bomb. Have you ever asked yourself, why do you find so many cheap original old school boxsters for sale? You can find them as low as six, seven, eight thousand dollars on the market. And you have to ask yourself why? Porsche is synonymous with performance driving and luxury, as well as just the overall sporting appeal. They've got a great reputation in the racing scene. So why would a Boxster be priced so cheaply? It's because they are essentially a ticking time bomb. The original flat six Boxsters and the IMS bearing were so bad, in fact, that you basically be, had to be prepared to throw your money away. Yes, there are some options. There are some options. There are oil-fed bearings to replace. You can put in their place, or you can also get an upgraded bearing as well. There's aftermarket solutions for that. But at the end of the day, it's dollars out of your pocket just to get it right. And even then, it's still not perfect. It is a problem, and sadly, the Boxster just missed the mark. And you likely won't see too many Boxsters that make over 100,000 miles. And with all of that said, everyone, if you've been looking at buying a used BMW, you're definitely gonna wanna see that video. It's gonna tell you all about it. Hope to see you guys real soon. Catch you then. Bye-bye. Thank you.